Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to join our Let's Learn Futures series webinar. And this uh, Futures and Derivative webinars is an educational initiative brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and organized by us, Life Champ. Okay. And today, we are very excited to bring to you a very renowned speaker, a very famous author, to talk about the introductions to futures concepts. So this is one of the elementary or preliminary class for you to understand what exactly are futures concept and how is it different from the stock market. Okay, and uh, uh, before we begin, just want to check if you can hear my voice. So if you can hear me, please go to the control panel and click raise the hand button. If you can hear me and see my screen and see our speaker on the line, please click raise the hand button. All right, click raise the hand button if you can hear me clearly. Let me see. Oh, hi everybody. I am seeing your hands right now. Thank you so much. You may put down your hands now. Thank you, you may put down your hands. Yeah, my name is uh, Shen Chu. I'm the host for this webinar. So before we begin, just want to talk about a disclaimer. So whatever we share in this webinar is only for educational purpose. You know where that we uh, give you any buy or sell call for any futures contract. So if you decide to long or short any futures contract, you, dis you do it at your own risk. Okay? So the presenter, or nor me, nor Bursa Malaysia will take any uh, responsibility for your own financial decisions. Okay? So now as usual, uh, every year we prepare a lot of uh, derivative content and also share investment content for you and uh, uh, this is our derivatives webinar. We have a whole structured uh, derivative webinar prepared for you. Uh, last month we talked about trading techniques, we talked about spread trading and this month we're going to talk about introductions to future concept and then uh, next month we have uh, Malay webinar that will talk about pengenalan kepada konsep uh, niaga hadapan okay so and then we have a whole most a whole lot more of futures derivative webinar that are designed to empower you or to understand derivative how you can use it to your uh, trading and meet your financial objective okay now so if you want to be if you complete the whole series you will be very uh, you will be a very savvy futures trader. Now, allow me to introduce uh, the speaker for t uh, today. And uh, I'm very honored to be able to invite her to share with you the idea of uh, futures trading. And uh, she is none other than Pauline Yong. Okay, hi, Pauline. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hi. Yeah, she is the. Thank you for having me. Yeah, correct. Allow me to introduce yourself. So, uh, she is the Managing Director of Sigma Wealth and she is a CFP and a Licensed Financial Planner with Securities Commission and also a Bank in the Garage. She has been in this training industry for more than 20 years. So, it's an industry veteran that I look up to. Uh, she was an economy lecturer for 16 years and now she is the course facilitator for the FPAM. CP courses. She has published five investment books and uh, financial planning books and uh, she's a very famous author and she writes regularly. She is a, she is a speaker with a big heart. She writes to share her, her knowledge with many people as uh, through her, uh, 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 her articles in magazines and newspaper and also as a regular guest on the City Plus FM radio for the stock market outlook. Okay, so She's also a member of uh, Society of Technical Analysis of uh, UK and also the CFTE, Certified uh, Financial Technicians, if I'm not, not mistaken. Okay, now without further ado, let me hand it over the session to you, Pauline. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, today, my session here is about um, introduction to the futures um, trading concept. So, um, do you, can you hear me? Yes, okay. we can hear you loud and clear. All right. Now, okay, so, yeah. we are seeing your screen now. All right. Excellent. Okay, let me go back to my screen. Uh, yeah, we are seeing your screen minute. now. You are seeing my, okay. Yeah, I'm okay. seeing your screen. 
So yeah. So this is uh, today, the one hour webinar, our, this is the content for today. I will first talk about the background of our, our Busan Malaysia derivatives, and then uh, what is the future contract, and what are the types of futures contract, and who are the market participants, and why do we trade futures, and uh, the order types, and also the case studies. So um, a lot of us, we are very familiar with um, buying into the stock market. We can own a share like uh, public bank, May Bank or CIMB Bank. And then when, however, when it comes to trading futures, right, um, people, are, people are thinking that futures trading is very risky. And then there are some of them, they even um, try to avoid um, having into the trading into the futures market. So I hope that today with this um, one hour introduction, introductory um, webinar on the futures trading, you will have a different look uh, about this um, trading industry. And then perhaps you can start opening account and to um, have a try on the futures market. So um, for our uh, Malaysia, we have two exchanges. And the one that I said just now uh, about buying into the stock market, uh, the public share, public bank shares or CMB bank shares, that one is um, buying into the Pusa Malaysia um, stock exchange market. So for the futures trading, we have another exchange is called the Pusa Malaysia derivatives. So the Pusa Malaysia derivatives, the word derivatives comes from the word derive, derive demand. So uh, whatever options or futures listed in this um, Pusa market, uh, derivatives market is actually a derived demand. So what that means is that these um, uh, listing, right, they were, they are actually having an underlying um, commodities or uh, financial instruments. So don't worry about it. Um, later when I go through and I'll explain uh, further into details. So for Busan Malaysia derivatives, um, it's owned by, 75% um, is owned by our Busan Malaysia Berhad and 25% is actually owned by Chicago Merchandise Exchange. And uh, one thing we are very proud of our um, Busan Malaysia derivative market is that our FCPO uh, is the most liquid and successful crude palm oil futures contract in the world. So. Our, the pricing that's set in our BMD here is actually is the benchmark for the world um, crude palm oil price. Okay, so what is the futures contract? Futures contract are standardized legal agreements obligating buyer or seller to buy or sell a commodity financial instrument at a future date and an agreed upon price. So what does that mean? So it means that you have a buyer and a seller entering into a contract. And then this contract will have a specified uh, uh, the date, a future date, and then the uh, price for the for the underlying um, commodities or the financial instrument. So let me. Um, there are different types of. Uh, I will go. I will illustrate further. There are different types of uh, futures contract. So we have the basically we have financial futures, and this includes the stocks, the indices, and the interest rates. The most common are the indices. The other one is the commodity futures. So for this commodity futures, we have uh, crude palm oil, we have crude oil, gold, uh, silver, soybean, and things like that. So these are the um, options and futures that are traded in our Busan Malaysia derivatives market. So we have an extensive list over here. Um, the gold futures, the palm oil, the um, index futures, the uh, interest rate and also the um, options. So among these, right, the most liquid or the most popular ones are the crude palm oil futures. And the next one is our uh, FKLI, which is our KLCI futures. So this one, the underlying will be the crude palm oil. The product is crude palm oil. And then for the KLCI futures, it will be our <coughs> BUSA, our uh, our KLCI index, which is comprised of uh, top 30 uh, largest cap stock in Malaysia. Okay, so this KLCI futures will be um, comprised of our top 30. So now recently in uh, last year, October uh, 2018, we have a new product come, which is the uh, Busa Malaysia 70 futures, FM70. So this one is actually to go hand in hand along with the KLCI futures. So what that means is that this is based on top 30 uh, largest cap stocks, whereas this one, the index is based on uh, the next seven 
50 uh, top largest cap stocks in Malaysia. So this is comprised of mid cap stocks. Okay, mid cap stocks. So, um, and it is gaining popular. Of course, the most common is uh, the crude palm oil. Okay, so what is a standardized contract? So this is a standardized contract that consists of the contract size, the contract month, the trading hours, and the minimum ticks. So for example, we have the KLCI futures contract. So, um, okay, the KLCI futures contract, uh, the contract code is uh, FKLI. So in short, we will say FKLI. So that's referred to our KLCI futures contract. And then the underlying instrument will be our KLCI index. Okay. And um, the contract size is our KLCI multiplied by 50 ringgit. So if let's say our KLCI index is 1,700 points, so that will be 175, uh, 1,700 times 50 ringgit. Okay. Then the minimum price fluctuation or the minimum take or the minimum price fluctuation is the 0 0.5 index point value at 25 ringgit. So if any movement about one index point will be 50 ringgit. Okay, so um, then the trading hour is uh, 8.45 to 12.45. The second trading session will be 2.30 to 5.15. So the, our um, derivative market operate at a different um, operation hour than our stock market. So um, you need to adjust that. So which is uh, 15 minutes um, earlier and 15 minutes later than our equity market. Then next we come to, and just now the contract price uh, is actually 4,000 ringgit per contract. So if you are looking at uh, to buy one contract, the price is 4,000 ringgit per contract. So the next one is our crude palm oil futures contract, which is also 4,000 ringgit per contract. And the code is called FCPO. Okay, so in short, people usually say FCPO, FCPO, and then the other one is called FKLI, FKLI. So we refer to these two um, most popular contracts. And the under, uh, underlying instrument is the crude palm oil. Okay, the contract size is 25 metric tons, which is 25,000 kilograms. That's a lot. And uh, the minimum price fluctuation is one ringgit per metric ton. So that means when the price move up by one ringgit, uh, it will be 25 ringgit for your futures um, contract. The trading hour will be uh, also two session, 10, but it starts at 10.30. So it starts at a, at a later time than our stock market. So it's 10.30 to 12.30 and then the, however, it also ends late, which is uh, 2.30 to 6 p.m. Okay. Okay, next we come to the um, market participants. So when we are into this um, futures market, we want to know who are the market participants. So the first one is the hedgers. So the hedgers refer to those uh, people who has already owned an underlying position in that particular commodity. So for example, you are the palm oil producer. So for a palm oil producer, you will have uh, harvest your crop. So your crop will be your palm oil seeds. So you want to sell it. So however, if you if you plan now and then months later or one year later, then you want to sell it, you do not know what will be the price later because the commodity, as you know, the commodity price is always fluctuating. So um, in order to uh, protect yourself, protect your position, so this palm oil producer will enter into a contract, a sell contract. That means they will shut the con uh, market. They will shut the FCPO. So that means they have to um, this particular application, this uh, price, uh, specific spe uh, specific price at a specific date of delivery. Okay, so they will enter into a selling hedge to protect against their selling price. Okay, so when it comes to the buying hedge, who are the people that will buy the uh, futures contract for this um, hedging pur um, purpose. So in this case will be the palm oil refinery. Okay, so for example, if you are the palm oil refinery, so a palm oil refinery will need to buy the raw material and the raw material will be the palm oil seeds, for example. So you need to buy the palm oil seeds from the palm oil producers. So then you will need to enter into a buy contract. 
That means you log in your buy price. So in a future date, at this specific date, at this specific time, then you can buy at exactly this price. So is it beneficial? Yes, beneficial to both parties. So for the sellers, uh, you can uh, protect your selling price. And then for the buyers, you can actually protect your buying cost. So actually, this is a win-win situation for both parties because they are hedging against their position. Okay. Then we come to the speculators. So who are the speculators? All of us, okay, me, you, everybody else in the, um, that we do not own any underlying position because um, for us, we just merely um, trying to profit from this futures market by using our fundamental analysis and our technical analysis to try to take advantage of these price fluctuations. So we are the speculators. So is this with risk? Yes, this is with considerable amount of risk. Okay. Then the next market participants are the arbitragers. So the arbitragers are the ones that try to profit the price misalignments in different markets. So the keywords is different markets. So that means you have, let's say you sell uh, Apple in market A, and then you, there's also another place where you sell, um, there's another market for Apple for in um, place B. So the two markets, they have a price difference. So the arbitrager will buy from one market and sell to the other market to profit from the price difference. So this is arbitrage. So for our Busan Malaysia, the only example that I can think of is at settlement. So at the settlement price, when you see that there's some uh, differences in the price, the spot price and the settlement price, maybe you can take advantage of that. But however, that one you need to come up with a lot of cash to buy the, the, the contract. So, and is this with risk, uh, with low risk or no risk? Because there is a, a secure market out there already. Okay, so um, physical delivery. So when you are in this um, futures market, right, you will heard about physical delivery. So this physical delivery concerns who? Okay, is it concerns the buyer of the contract or concerns the seller of the contract? What do you think? I give you three seconds to think about physical delivery. Okay, so when you see that this um, delivery, it means deliver to you. So who are the people who would receive something? The buyer or the seller? Yes, the buyer. Okay, so if you are the buyer of the, if you long a contract, that means you buy one contract. So at the end of the expiry date, and then if you do not sell it, that means you are obligating to buy this particular um, commodities from another uh, party. Okay, so however, in our um, futures market, usually our brokerage firm will, before the um, delivery date, they will ask you to sell or to close your position because they do not want to deliver this kind of uh, physical goods is uh, too, too um, complicated. Okay, so this is physical delivery. So if let's say you are the seller, then you have the obligation to um, deliver this, uh, sell this product to the other party. Okay. The next one, um, we talk about some futures trading terminologies. So um, the most common that we can see is long means buy, and then short means sell, okay? Long is buy, and then short means sell. So this is simple, right? However, the next one, people always confuse. Bid price and offer price, okay? So you, you see this bid price starts with the letter B, so I always ask my student to remember, if it's B, you remember buy, okay? So bid price is equal to the buy price, the price at which the buyer is willing to pay for the contract. So always remember the bid price is the buy price because it's a B there. Then the, the other one obviously will be the sell price. Offer price is the selling price, okay? Then we have the market price, which is the spot price or the current price of the contract. Then the settlement price. This settlement price uh, is calculated by the BUSA. So it is actually the average price uh, of the contract throughout the day. So um, this settlement price is actually available half an hour later of the closing, uh, the, the market close. Half an hour later, then the settlement price will appear. And usually this settlement price is to calculate the margin position, okay? The accounts for the margin. Okay, the next one is the initial margin. 
So this initial margin is the amount of money required to initiate a buy or a sell position. So for example, if the contract is 4,000 ringgit for one contract, so the initial margin will be 4,000 ringgit. Okay, then the maintenance margin is the minimum amount of equity required to hold that position of that uh, contract is initiated. So for the beginning, the um, the maintenance margin is also equal to the initial margin, which is also 4,000. However, your broker will ask you to um, top up a bit more um, to prevent um, the next one, what we call is a margin call. Because very often when you enter into a contract, right, if the price does not move according to your um, prediction, if you long a contract, you are expecting it to move higher. However, it moved the other way around. So if it moved the other way around, that means your position, you will have a negative position. So then you will come into this margin call. Okay, so this margin call. So, so in order to avoid margin call, usually the broker will ask you to top up a bit more. So if you are looking at to trade one contract, 4,000 ringgit, so probably you will have to top up like uh, five or 6,000 ringgit so that you don't get trigger the margin call so uh, frequently. Then you have the value per tick. So the dollar value affect the smallest unit move in the futures price. So just now we saw that the per tick uh, is uh, one ringgit and uh, 25 ringgit for the crude palm oil. And then it's also 25 ringgit for the FKLI. Okay. Okay, so next, just now we, we talk about the long and the short. So when it is long, it means to buy. So when would you want to long a contract? It's when you think that the price will go up. So usually you will have an entry price over here and then um, you have a, a target profit. Okay, so this one you have to, based on the technical analysis, usually for, for traders, you have to know technical analysis. So you enter a entry price and then you set a target profit and then at the same time you also set a stop loss so from the diagram here you can see that uh, the target profit and the stop loss is about a three to one ratio so this three to one ratio we also call it the risk reward ratio so reward to risk ratio it will be covered in another by another trainer in another video on the risk management so however um, there is no right or wrong way because sometimes although the textbook tells you it's three to one however when you do the real trading um, depends on the product depends on the market participants environment this thing can be changing okay um okay the short sell short sell means when you're expecting the price to go down so when you short sell means you short at a certain price and then you are you are, you will set the target below the price Okay, so that will be your profit at below the price, and then your stop loss stop loss will be above it. Okay, so this is the basic understanding about long and short before you can enter into the uh, to trade into the futures market. Okay, the next one is volume and the open interest. A lot of people when we invest in the stock market, we are very familiar with volume. But however, when it comes to the futures market, then we see a new word, which is the open interest. So what is the uh, open interest? Okay, so first of all, the volume is the number of contracts traded in a day. So this is the uh, daily volume. So each trading day, the volume starts over at zero. So this is very simple, right? However, what is an open interest? Open interest is the number of contracts that have been created that are open. So the key word is, open okay so that means when you buy a contract you long a contract then in order to close a contract you were short that means you will sell it so buy to open a contract and then when you uh, close a position you will sell it okay so that's a closer position so um a lot of people they uh they explain this using um Mr. A do this and then Mr. B come in and then Mr. C, very complicated. So the way I explain it will be you focus on yourself, okay? You focus on yourself and then um, let's say if you long a contract. So when you long a contract, the volume increase, okay? You long a contract, then the volume increase. 
then the open interest also increase because it's an open position, correct? Then, okay, let's say um, you see that you have already made money, so you close the position. So when you close the position, you sell the futures. So you sell the futures, the volume also increase because it's a sales done. However, for this open interest, is it still open? No, because you close the position. So this open interest will reduce. That means you close the position, so it will reduce by one contract. Okay, so you can see that it, for this um, open interest, the keyword is also interest. Interest meaning that if you are still interested in this um, uh, futures contract, you will, you will still having an open position. However, when you decided to close it, that means maybe you are not interested in it anymore. So why you are closing the position, there could be a few reasons. First, is it because you are making money? Okay, if you hit your target profit, then you close the position. I'm not interested in this anymore, I want to go. Then number two, is it because the expiry date is nearing, then you need to go before the expiry date is near, then that means you want to leave. That means you are not interested in this anymore. You close the position. Okay, then number three, is it because the, the trend has changed and that it has moved against your um, forecast trend and then you, you want to stop loss. So you close the position, you are not interested in this anymore. So you can see that whenever you close a position, the, the word is that you may not be interested in this contract anymore. So this brings us to the next one where we will see that this volume is actually to verify the liquidity of the commodity. Whereas the open interest is to use to gauge the strength of the trend. So in order to test your understanding, uh, let's go to the next slide. So which one have strength? So for example, if let's say we say that um, the price, okay, the price go up and the volume also go up, okay? Then the open interest go up. Is this contract, this particular month contract, is it, uh, has it got strength? Yes, it has, it has strength. That means that the, the, a lot of people are very interested in this month's contract and then a lot of uh, open position. Okay, that's very good. Then however, when the next example over here, when the price go up and then the volume come down, Open interest also come down. So when you see open interest come down, it means what? People not, not interested, people are leaving this contract. So this month, this particular month's contract, not interested, okay? So is this got strength? No, okay? So this one, no strength, not enough strength. So the next one, when the price go down, okay? Um, it's a very bear market. Uh, let's say uh, it's a after election bear market or everybody short. Okay, then the volume go up open interest also up, okay? Because everybody think that it will go down lower, so they keep uh, open their position. So in this kind of uh, situation, does this have strength? Yes, okay? Then the next one, when the price go down, the problem go down and the open interest also go down. So this one also, um, the strength is reducing. So um, in the summary, what do you see? You see that whenever the open interest is up, that means this particular contract is gaining momentum. A lot of people are interested in this particular month's contract. However, when this month's contract, you see the um, uh, open interest is reducing and then the next month's contract, the open interest is increasing. You know that people are closing this month and then going to the next month, okay? So for a trader, we, we always say that trend is your friend for the for 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 being a trader, you have to always follow the trend. Okay, you follow where the market is. Okay. Then the next one, why do we trade futures? So, um, I'm going to talk about the three benefits of uh, trading futures. The first one is the leverage. So, um, as you can see, that um, leverage means um, borrowing. Okay, ability to make large profits for a relatively small outlays of money. 
So small changes in price can make huge gains or losses because you borrow money, so you only need to um, pay a little bit of upfront and then while well, you can still buy the same contract. So for example, we have a spot market. So let's say this is without borrowing. Uh, so that means in the spot market, the price of the CPO is 2,200 per metric ton. And let's say you want to buy 25 metric tons of a CPO. So your cash outlay will be 2,002 times 25, which is 55,000. Okay, so that means assuming you do not borrow money and then you want to buy the um, crude palm oil uh, for this um, futures contract, it, you have to pay 2,002 times 25, which is 55,000 ringgit. Then the price increased 50 ringgit and you can make a profit of 1,250. And what is your profit percentage of your profit will be 1250 divided by your capital 55,000, which is 2.27%. So this is without borrowing. So let's see another example with the borrowing. Okay, so with the borrowing, let's say you have this uh, uh, futures contract, FCPO is 2200, and then you long one contract. You long one contract, and then the margin you need to pay is how much? It's only 4,000. You don't have to come up with 55,000, it's only 4,000. And then when the price increase 50 ringgit, it becomes 2250. And how much you will get? Your profit will be, because uh, for uh, it will be times 25. So for the uh, 50 ringgit increase, you have to times 25, which is 1250. So the percentage of profit will be 31.25%. So we can see that uh, because of the cash outlay is very small, 4,000 only. So that's why you are able to um, have a larger gain, okay? So the margin pay is only 4,000. So uh, our leverage is about 13.75, 13.75 times leverage. Okay, the next benefit of having to trade in this futures market is that we have a two ways trading. So that means if the market is going up, you can long or buy. If the market is bearish, going down, you can short or sell. Although in our Busa Malaysia, the equity market, we can also long and we can also short sell. However, the short sell, it has to be done, recover, uh, buy back within a day. So um, where else for this futures market, you do not have to buy within a day. You can as long as you wish. So that's the flexibility. So, and if you notice when the market is dropping or falling, the speed of dropping is faster than the speed of rising. Okay. So um, usually people, when they short, and then if it's a bearish market, the percentage of the profit is much higher than long. Okay, then, um, so for example, you buy one contract at uh, 2,600 and then you sell one contract at 2,620. So that means you make how many points? 20 points. So 20 points times 25 ringgit will be 500 ringgit. Okay, so this is a uh, 20 points of a target is a, a normal uh, profit target for a swing trading. Okay, so then the short sell, if let's say you uh, sell a contract and then the price dropped to 2610 from 2620 dropped to 2610. So um, when the mark, when the price drop, is it good or bad for you if you short the market? It is good. So then you your profit will be 10 points times 25, which is 250. Okay. So next is the hedging. The advantage about um, buying into the futures market is the hedging as well. So for example, um, just now we talk about the hedging for the crude palm oil, right? The farmers and the um, palm oil refinery. So how about if you own some stocks, some big cap stocks, and um, this uh, majority are the um, top 30 component stocks. So if you own top 30 component stocks, perhaps you want to hedge your position uh, with buying the futures contract, uh, sorry, it's shorting the futures contract because the equity market, you already buy those um, equity positions. So in the futures market, you have to short the futures contract. Okay, so this, this is to protect the price from uh, uh, falling. When the price is falling, at least your, you can make money in the futures market. So this example, we can see that the price is uh, from the 1st of October 
to the January of uh, this year, January 6th. The percentage change for these stocks are these percentage change and then the value of portfolio reduced. So all in all reduced about uh, 9%. So your per portfolio has reduced to uh, 41,890, okay? So you lost in your portfolio is uh, 4,000 ringgit plus. So now what happened if let's say you shot the market at the same time, also on the October 1st, okay? Because you see that uh, suddenly you have this feeling that oh, the market is not stable and then uh, I have such a large position in the equity market. And then what happened if the stock market collapsed? What happened? So in order to protect my position, I better short one contract in the futures market. So you can short one contract in the uh, FKLI uh, with the initial margin of only 4,000 uh, ringgit. However, you cannot short, uh, if let's say you want to short the current month, um, the next month you have to uh, keep buying the, the second month, keep shorting the second month, okay? Otherwise you can straight away buy into the third month. So in this example, let's say you buy, uh, you short one contract, and then um, the price dropped to one six, the index dropped to one six seven four from one seven nine five dropped to one six seven four. Okay, so that's our KLCI index drop. So then our FKLI also dropped as well. So our FKLI um, dropped from one seven nine five to one six seven four. The spot market may not drop exactly this price, but uh, let's say this uh, futures market, it dropped like this, okay? So the gains from the futures will be 1795 minus 1674 uh, times 50 ringgit, okay? That will be 6,000. So you lost from the stock portfolio is 4,000, so you have a gain of 1,860. So this is just an example, okay? So, um, okay. So, so far, over here, up to here, we have been talking about information about the uh, futures contract. Uh, why do we want to trade futures? And then um, the the background about futures. Okay, but we haven't gone into the the execution of the futures um, contract. So if let's say um, you are new in this industry in the futures market, and then you are eager to learn about this futures concept. Um, I hope that this one hour webinar, you can learn something and then maybe you can have a bit of a confidence in this uh, futures market. Uh, because I've been investing in the stock market for more than 20 years. However, in this futures uh, market, I've been investing for, I've been trading for about six years. Okay, so for me, I would consider myself as a new, uh, uh, comer in this market as well. So, however, um, through the six years, um, I have learned a lot and then um, I have the tendency to trade in this futures market and I think that uh, the futures market is very liquid. So, I will allocate a part of my portfolio. For example, I have 100% uh, of a uh, uh, portfolio. Maybe I will allocate like less than 10% of my portfolio into the futures market. So then I can have diversification. And then also uh, my long-term, uh, my portfolio in the equity market is a long-term position. So every month I will go in and buy some of the uh, stocks from the equity market. However, for the futures market, I will treat it as a short-term uh, portfolio for myself. So I will trade like uh, on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. So um, the money that, turn out from the futures is a bonus to me because sometimes uh, if you are very good focus, you can make, I mean, you can have a 10 to 20% per month. So that is a very good uh, month. Okay. However, of course there will be some losses. So on the average out per year on an annual basis, if you can maintain 10% of a uh, return, that will be good. All right. So next, the part, next part of this session, uh, we're going to look at the execution. I'm going to introduce to you what are the order type. Okay, take a deep breath, and then we're going to do the next session here. Okay, so say, for example, after today's session, you open an account, okay, tomorrow, and then um, they will give you password and uh, uh, ID, login ID, and then you can trade online. So then you come to this platform. So this platform, um, you will have this screen. Okay, so the let's say you are looking at, because you are familiar with the equity market, so for a start, maybe you want to trade uh, FKLI, which is the KLCI index, because you are more familiar with KLCI index. 
So you look at this um, screen and then you can see that you have uh, important, I will um, mention the important um, keyword. Uh. The important keyword is this uh, last done, the buy price, the sell price, and then the open interest, the volume, and then day high, day low. So these are the important information when you look at the screen. So for, for example, in this case, um, you look at, uh, it, this is a February, um, February 7. Okay, when I prepared the slide, it was February 7. So I screenshot the, the, the screen and then I put it here. And then you can see that for that day, the last done was uh, 1689.5, okay? Then the buy price is 1689 and the sell price is 1689.5. So it's 50, uh, 50 cents uh, above, 50.0.5 above the buy price. Because remember just now we said bid and offer. So this is buy price and this is sell price. So buy price is always lower than the sell price. Okay, because if you want to buy, of course you want to buy lower, cheaper. If you want to sell, of course you want to sell higher and more expensive. So that's why you have this uh, uh, buy price at a lower price and then sell price at a higher price. Okay, then the last one. Now, over here, what this tell me is that my last done price is my sell price. So what does that tell you? So that means the people, the last, the person who do the last contract is actually buying from the seller. He buys straight from the market, which is 1689.5. He doesn't want to wait. If you want to wait, you can wait at 1689. And then you will have seven contracts waiting together along with you. So if let's say you do not want to wait, you jump to this one person who is willing to sell only. Because over here, you can see that only one person are willing to sell. And then over here, you have seven person or seven contract uh, waiting to, to uh, buy at this price. So if you are very eager and you look at the market, it's going to go up. So I'm scared that I cannot get the, the, the contract. So I quickly jump into the market and then I buy at this 1689.5. So what can you tell in this kind of market? with this simple information. So with this simple information, this straight away tell us that this market generally is having a bullish sentiment, okay? That means uh, the market is bullish sentiment and then the buyers are willing to pay extra, something higher, okay, just to get it done immediately. Okay, so, um, so this is the, future um, trading terminology when you, as a starter, you have to get yourself familiarized. Then how you want to calculate your profit and loss. So say for example, you buy at the 1689.5 and then um, the price, uh, which is uh, according to your expectation, rise to 1693.5. Then you gain four points. Four points is 50 ringgit, it's 200 ringgit. So that's a good gain. So some people, if their target is uh, 200 or 100, maybe the, the rest of the week, they don't have to trade anymore because that hit their target. Then um, if let's say um, you, uh, let's say you decided to buy at that price, 1689.5, however, the market go against you and then it dropped to 1685.5. So you lost four points. So remember future trading is always, uh, uh, double edged sword. So it can go this uh, uh, according to your way or it can go the opposite direction. So there's a risk involved. So you need to manage your risk. So in this case, um, the minus four point is a uh, uh, loss and then you lost 200 ringgit. So you can gain four, four points and then you can lose four points. So the, the position, you can tell that um, it can be quite risky, okay, if you do not manage your risk well. So the keyword is to manage your risk. Whatever we do, always involve risk. It's whether we know how to manage your risk or not, okay? So the margin call. So let's say, um, give you an example about a margin call because sometimes if you are new, you, you are afraid of having a margin call and then you do not know what to do. So for example, 1st of March, you you set up an account and then you put in 4,000 ringgit to buy a contract and then, um, you buy a 1750 contract and then um, the price 
the immediately after you bought the price didn't go down it went up 10 points okay so your position if you do not sell the position will be uh, increased by uh, 500 ringgit and then however the next day the market go down okay and then if you do not sell the the price the position will be minus 15 points from your uh, previous day position so in that case will be 3750 so that day end of the day you will receive a margin call from your broker okay they will ask you to top up uh, within the next day so that means um, if you do not sell and then the next day the price go against you you will go into the, the other direction and then the price go below 1750 remember you bought at 1750 then if let's say the settlement price is 1745 so that means 1750 compared to 1745 you are actually you lose five points so that five points is 250 ringgit okay so and that will be your margin call okay understand so as you go along try paper trading okay try paper trading and then um, you'll be uh, familiar okay next we look at the order types okay so there are three types of orders you have the market orders limit orders and the stop orders so the market orders uh, which is what I said just now so for example okay let me test you for example we have this um, contract okay the FKLI May 19 the bid price is uh, 1750 and the offer price is 1751 Okay, let's say Mr. Lee wants to buy a FKLI at a market price. What do you think will be the price executed? So that means this Mr. Lee, he uh, he is very eager to buy. Okay, he just want to get it at the market price. So what do you think will be the price um, transacted in the end? The answer is yes, one seven five one. Most likely, this will be the market price that will be transacted. Okay okay next limit orders so limit orders are placed for two reasons you can initiate a position uh, or you can close the position so a lot of us most of the orders 80 percent i would say 80 percent of the orders are limit orders so i always do uh, limit orders so that means what that means i will um, key in a number key in the price okay at your specific price so for example the market is one uh, seven uh, one seven two zero let's say one seven two zero and then um, you want to buy a long a futures contract for the FKLI. So then, um, however, the last one is 1721, uh, let's say. So however, you do not want to buy at 1721. You, you think that the price will come down, okay? You just want to queue. So therefore, you key in a price. Let's say you key in 1720. Okay, maybe I'll write here. You key in a one, oops. Okay, so uh, say for example, you want to um, buy at a limit price, okay? So let's say you want to buy at a limit price and then um, the price is 1720 compared to 1721, okay? So if you want to initiate a limit order, what will be the price? Okay, so maybe I should show you this example here. So this is the example 1750, 1751. So let's say you want to have a limit order. So the limit order in this case, what will be the price? Yes, it will be 1750 because you want to queue at this price. Although the last time may be 1751 or it could be 1750 or it could be 1750.5. However, you key in a specific number and then this price will be according to your specific price. Okay, so this is limit order. You can um, do one example because um, if you're talking about the KLCI index futures, right, the daily range could be plus or minus 10, 15 points. Okay, so that's a norm, 10 or 15 points. So for example, um, you open the market and then you want to test, okay, just want to test the market. So you the market may be opening at 1750. So you you just throw in a limit price at 1740, 10 points lower. Okay, you throw in a price 10 points lower at 1740. 
and then you wait for the um the volatility because the price will move up and down, move up and down. You wait for the price to come down to one seven four zero, and you see whether um you got the chance to hit that one seven four zero or not. You can do this as an example. Okay, sometimes it may hit, sometimes it may not hit. Okay, so it depends on the the situation. So this is one example whereby you just pin one very low price and then waiting for the price to hit. Okay, and then when it move up, then you sell. So that's one example. So the if let's say he Mr. Lee wants to sell at the limit order, so what would be the price? It will be one seven five one. Okay, so very simple. So the limit order is the most simplest one. Um, stop order. Okay, stop order. You can either uh limit a loss. The word stop. You see the word stop is already um understood. Okay, that means you want to stop loss. So in the open position, it goes against you, and then you want to stop loss, or it can be using as an initiate a position. Okay, let's look at the limit loss first. So for example, you long this um, March contract at one seven seven five. Target profit is ten points, and then you stop loss five points. So stop loss five five points meaning what? When the price go down to one seven seven zero, it will automatically cut loss for you. Okay. So in this case, let's say, so that means you, you key in, after you key in the limit order, uh, after you key in the limit order 1775, and then you got this at 1775, and then the market, immediately after you got your contract at 1775, right? The market did not go up, but it went down further. So it went down, and then you scared that it may go down a lot. So you quickly key in another order, contingency order, another order is called the sell stop order. Okay, on the screen you can um, key in, look for the sell stop. Okay, sell stop order, and then you key in the price that you want to stop loss. So you stop loss at one seven seven zero. So when the price um, move down from one seven seven four, one seven seven three, one seven two, one seven seven one, one seven seven zero, then it will hit the trigger the 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 um, the the order, trigger the order, and then you will cut loss at five points, okay, for that contract. So market falls and then you are protected, okay, market fall further, but you are protected. So your loss will be limited at only five points. So um, the reason why I want to show this chart is that when you trade uh, FKLI, FKLI futures market have your futures um, chart. However, because the underlying um, instrument is the KLCI index, so you need to go to the KLCI index to see the bigger picture first. Okay, so this is a KLCI um, index, and then let's say you look at the index, and then um, there is this uh, uh, after the election, there's this big drop. Okay, and then you can see there's a very clear uh, chart pattern here. Okay, this is multi top chart pattern, and then the neckline is 1811. The next line is 1811. Okay. Then um, this particular day, the price closed below 1811. The price closed below 1811. And then you look at the chart, and then this gives you a opportunity. So that means, say for example, um, if that is the case, you know that if this is a, um, going to happen, right? Most likely, this. Uh, the next few weeks or next few days is going to be a bearish market. So then you can immediately short over here. Okay. However, if let's say um, up to this point, up to this point, um, you do not know what's going to happen after election. You still knew there's a new government, so you don't know what's going to happen. So then um, let's say you see that, oh, it is going to come down below the 220 day moving average and then you you are looking at such a big um, top chart pattern a major uh, multi top chart pattern so you are worried that what happened if it break down below the neckline and then it will have a further down trend okay so before it break below this um, neckline perhaps you want to trade a uh, order call a uh, breakout okay you want to trade this a uh, breakout uh, order so that means you can do one stop order as well so you can actually do this uh, stop order so this um, stop orders is called initiate a position okay so to 
So the missing stop order, you can have uh, two types, two scenario. One is to stop loss. The other one is to initiate a position. And this initiating a position is called, uh, usually it's during the breakout uh, scenario. So when the market is uh, coming down and then coming to a chart pattern and then it's going to come down um, a lot. So it's going to have a breakout position. So you can key in first, okay? You can initiate this um, stop loss, stop order using key in a uh, stop order and then you key in the uh, one eight, maybe zero nine. So when the price hit, below the 1809, you will trigger that order for you. Then you will log in as a short order for that particular contract. Then as the price go down, then you will make the money. Or you can do as a positive pick breakout. So you see that it's a double W, uh, double bottom W chart pattern. And then you see that it's going to break out the 20 day and the 200 day moving average is going to break out. So there could be a breakout position. So then you can key in this stop order as well. So you key in the stop order and then key in the price that you think it will break above, key in and then um, it will be there running and then until it hit that uh, trigger that uh, number, then it will uh, lock in for the price for you, the order for you. Okay. So this is called the stop order. Actually, not many people use this one. So let's do a summary on this uh, order types because when you are into this futures trading, you need to know the order type so that you don't buy into the wrong type of order. It will affect um, a lot if let's say you accidentally key in the wrong order. Okay, then um, you look at this. Huh? So if let's say you are looking at the, uh, sell limit the left hand side will be the sell limit and the buy limit over here okay so sell limit and the buy limit is very simple it's a majority of us we are doing it so we key in a low price and then waiting for it to um, go up so let's say we key in a low price and then it hit the low price and then immediately we key in a very like a 10 points target price or five point target price because to you you say okay i want to make 250 ringgit for that day so you key in a, a five points target price so you enter a sell limit Okay, and the sell limit. So um, for normal, we enter a buy limit, a particular price, and then we close the position and then we enter a sell limit at a particular price. Understand? So this buy limit and sell limit is for the most common types of order. However, when do you use a buy stop and a sell stop? So the buy stop is when you want to short the market. Okay, you want to short the market. However, the market is very bullish. It went all the way up. So then you quickly have to use a buy stop okay, to stop loss. Then when do you need to sell stop? So when you want to buy, at a, uh, you think that the market, you want to buy low and then you think that the market will go up. However, it didn't go up, it went all the way down. So immediately you want to key in a sell stop order to protect your uh, price from dropping further. Okay, so this is the, the four types of um, orders okay let's say we have uh, we have the spot price uh, 1689 okay so this is uh, February 7 February 7 we have this contract let's say we have two contract which is a two two months contract one is February one is March okay February and March so for February we have 1689.5 and then uh, this is the uh, whatever pricing so let's say on this date this particular day you want to buy into the futures contract and then what should you do? So first, you have a series of uh, steps to take note. So you must have a trading plan. So this trading plan uh, uh, will start with the uh, first thing, determine whether either you want to long or short. How do you determine? You look at the chart here. Okay, let's say this is a chart for that particular day. The, you look at the spot market. Uh, spot, spot market will tell you the overall picture first. Then only you look into the futures contract um, technical analysis. And then when you look into the future contract, you are looking at the five minutes charts, the, the 15 minutes charts and the 30 minutes charts. And, and these are the technical analysis belong to that particular month's contract. Okay, then, and that one you have to, uh, uh, is uh, meant for your execution. Okay. However, if let's say you just want to know whether you want to long or short a big picture, right? You go to the spot market. You go to the spot market and you look at the study the chart. So this is the chart. So the chart tells me that on that particular day, on the February 7, our KLCI index, although it's a black bar, however, we are still supported by a 20-day uh, moving average. This um, red line is a 20-day moving average. However, 
do you see my trend line, this 45 degree trend line? Usually I will draw a 45 degree trend line. And in order to know how what is the slope of this trend line, you go to the previous slope. Then you use this slope and then you move to this um, position. Then you know that um, when it will break. So in this case, it has broken below the trend line. So one, it has broken below the trend line, it means that the trend is weakening. The trend is weakening. However, it is weakening, but it is still supported by this 20-day moving average. So in this kind of a situation, the market is kind of uh, undecided. Okay, so given this scenario, what should you do? Okay, go back. Do you want to long or do you want to short? Okay, you can, actually for this, you can do a spread. Because when uh, the previous lesson, you heard about spread, is when um, you can long and short at the same time. So um, this was covered previously, so I'm not going to talk about it. So you can do a spread in a, in a, a horizontal um, manner, or you can uh, take a long position because as long as it is above the 20-day moving average, you can take a long position. However, the target profit, maybe you want a lesser target. Maybe you don't want to have 10 points target. You just want to have five points target. Okay, so that, that can be adjustable. So your target profit may be lower because of that situation. You know, it's a horizontal market. And then the time frame, maybe because of this horizontal situation, you don't want to keep in the market for too long. Maybe one or two days will do. Okay, so the time frame, you set the time frame. Is it the daily or two day kind of thing? And then which month contract? Usually for the KLCI, FKLI, we use a current month, which is the February. However, when it comes to the 21st of uh, the month, then usually we'll go on to the next month, March. Okay. So then the target profit, a uh, stop loss. So in this case, the target profit maybe will have a five point, 10 points kind of thing, or eight points or seven points. Then the loss will be the 20 day moving average. It has to be 20 day moving average. This is a stop loss, slightly below it. Because for um, however, definitely um, when we are looking at this uh, uh, futures market, we have to refer to the technical analysis of that futures contract. And then so similarly, in that futures contract, we have to draw this line, okay, the trend line. And then we have to see whether it break below the trend line. Once it break below the trend line, um, you have to be careful that the trend is weakening. Okay, so um, when it comes to the technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and that one will be covered in another webinar. So that one, uh, maybe I will show you the, the five hour chart, the 15 hour chart and the half an hour chart, and then you can see how they move. Okay, so then, um, so what have you learned today? Okay, so today we have learned what is the future contract, basically the general, then what are the types, and then um, the popular ones in our Busan Malaysia derivatives are the FKLI and the FCPO. And then, who are the market participants? Majority are the speculators. Then, uh, why trade futures? Because of the leverage, you can gain more. And then, um, perhaps uh, you can, uh, a lot, certain people will do the hedging. Lah. Because uh, for the equity, if you have equity, um, usually you will not hedge the futures market. But if you wish, you maybe you can hedge for one contract only. You don't hedge to take a large position in the futures market. I would not advise you to do that, okay? Uh, because for futures, um, time is your enemy. What do you mean? What do I mean by time is your enemy? That means each contract has an expiry date, okay? So when you buy, the minute when you buy into the futures contract, right, the time is ticking, 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 so it's your enemy. Whereas when you are in the equity market, the time is your friend. If you buy into blue chip stock, you just hold it for uh, 10 years or you know, for, for long. And then the dividend alone can uh, recover your capital because if you are talking about 7% or 6% kind of uh, uh, dividends. So um, it's different, okay? Trading in the stock market and trading in the futures market is different. So that's why in when you're trading in the futures market, you, you will find it very lonely because you cannot share your trading strategies with your friends because uh, everybody is your enemies. If you share with them your secrets, then they will copy you and then you have no more advantage, no more edge. So a lot of time um, dealing in, in the futures market, you have to be uh, secretive and then humble and then down to earth and low profile. Then you can survive for a long time. Okay, then um, also we also learned that the order types, okay? So um, yeah, I think that's all for 
today one hour. Yeah, is it one hour already? Yeah, yes. it's one hour. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, Pauline, for your wonderful sharing on the uh, futures. Now, do you have any question? If you have any questions, you may write it in the uh, in the question and answer box so that uh, Pauline will be able to uh, help you to address some of your questions. All right. Now, the first question we have on our screen is: uh, Do you have any any good books on futures that you can recommend them for reading, or any YouTube? videos on futures that you can recommend okay sure the um the book that i read um so far for when i was in this uh as a starter starting to learn about futures i read the book called the um trade for a living have you heard about trading for a living by alexander elder so this book is a very good book as the because the author he really talked about the psychology of investing so um, you have to be humble when it comes to invest, uh, in, when you come to trading and uh, cannot be uh, overconfident. OK, so this is one book. And then another book is um, by the Elliott Wave. Perhaps you want to learn about Elliott Wave for the technical analysis and also um, the Guppy Trend Trading and the Market Wizard by Jack Swager, Swager the Market Wizard. OK, and um, technical analysis, um, there is one author called Pring Martin, and uh, he wrote this uh, technical analysis book. And that one is for the um, like a theory, theory textbook, kind of for technical analysis textbook, and which is good also for beginners. So these are the um, books that I would recommend. And for YouTube, I will recommend you to watch my YouTube <laughs> because I do share how to trade um, in the YouTube channel. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. So, would you be able to uh, reiterate what's the difference between deriv derivative and uh, uh, futures? Okay. Uh, derivatives market is the derived demand. So, this futures contract is under the uh, the derived demand, which is this subcategory. So, you can see this um, derivatives market as a whole market that has all the futures and options. Listed. And these futures and options, all of them has an underlying uh, instrument. And this underlying instrument is in another um, market. So therefore, this derivatives market or the futures market is actually, you are referring to the same thing. They are in the uh, 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 derived demand. That means they, they have, all of them have an underlying instrument. That means they are, their price performance it is, depends on the final product demand. OK? So this is what you call derived demand. The, the price fluctuation depends on the demand and supply of the final products. OK. Mm, I see. OK. Mm. So uh, how do I make an account for future trading if I already have a CDS account? So that's the next question. Ah, uh, yeah. You need to open another trading account. You need to open another uh, brokerage account. Okay, so the one that you have, the CVS, is for equity market. So it's different. So remember, I said we have two exchanges. One is the Busan Malaysia stock market, and the other one is a Busan Malaysia derivative market. So that's a futures market. So you need to open another brokerage, and the licenses are different. So the, the remiser for the equity market and the remiser for the uh, futures market, they are also two different licenses. So they, they are two different bodies. So you need to open in another um, brokerage account or they call it the futures uh, brokerage account. Mm, yes, you can Google. exactly. Yeah, you can Google from, yeah. okay. you can Google from the um, internet to see what are the futures brokers mm. available for Malaysia. Yeah, in fact, if you go to bursamarketplace.com, you'll be able to see which are the futures broker. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Would you want to show them how to find ah, the sure. broker? Yes. Yeah. You just okay. go to the. Wait. Um. So, um, for this Busa marketplace, is a very informative uh, website. Um, over here. Uh, actually, I wanted to show you. This is a place where you can um trade a 
uh, virtual futures, so paper trade. So for example, if you are very scared of uh, the real money trading, right? So you 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 want to trade uh, uh, virtually. So this is a place. So you go to um, the Busan marketplace and then you log in. Okay, you have to register and then log in and then you go to these futures. So you can see that um, over here in my portfolio, I have this uh, 5,000 plus. This was a portfolio that I did uh, last year whereby I shot the KLCI and then um, the, the amount of money that I made virtually on paper. Okay, and then also for the, uh, the brokerage, you can actually Google from here. Okay, you can Google and then see what the broker. Okay, anyway, uh, you can Google, you can Google yourself. It's, uh, you can explore this website, it's uh, very um, uh, useful. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at the next question is what underlying chart we use to trade FBM FM seventy. Underline chart. Oh okay. Oh uh, no, I wish I would open up my my uh okay. Actually I need to open up it's called the uh index, you know, the seventy maybe I go to Busa. Because I didn't uh, open up my software. Yeah, trading software. Okay, over yeah. here. Mm, over here, right? Did you see uh, we have all these index and all these index, right? Like a FBMT 100, all this FBM 70. Now, this one, each of them, they have their individual um, chart also. So if you subscribe to a broker and then they provide you with the chart, you can see the charts for uh, FBM 70. Just as you can see your FKLI, exactly. It says that uh, this chart will have to follow the 70 um, mid-cap stocks in uh, our Busan, Malaysia. And and this actually is more volatile than the KLCI index because KLCI index um, is a, the large 30 cap stock and they are very um, stable, the price. However, this uh, FBM 70 can be more volatile than the F, uh, KLCI index. So... Um, and the brokerage is much cheaper also. I think it's about two ringgit for the FPM 70. And then for the FKLI is uh, 15 ringgit per contract. And then the FCPO is uh, 16 ringgit. Oh, sorry, the FP FM 70 is five ringgit per contract. Okay, it's cheaper. Yeah, it's meant okay. for the smaller trader. Mm, yeah, smaller trader. And the contract um, per contract is uh, 900 or one. I can't remember. It's about 900 or 1,000. It's, it's much smaller than the 4,000 per contract. It's mm. uh, cheaper. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. The next question is uh, for hedging, what difference between sp uh, shorting spot month, then rollover, and uh, shorting the third month contract? Okay, so because you are shorting the spot month, right? So that means um, at the end of the day, the settlement day, 31st of the month, then your price will be calculated, will automatically cut off. Even if you do not sell, right? It will automatically calculate it for you at the settlement date. Then um, if let's say your but that particular day you lose or you gain, it will calculate that, consider you as a closing a position. Then the next month you have to key in the new order to initiate a long order for that the next month. So uh, even if you when you key in the long order, you need to uh, involve the brokerage charges. So you need to pay extra for the brokerage fee. And then when it comes to the end of the month, it will if you do not uh, close the contract, if you close the contract, you will you will have to pay for that. Uh, brokerage fee. However, it is uh, closing at the settlement, then um, you will settle, you will consider close as well. And then the third month, you will have to initiate another open position. So in a sense that you will incur more brokerage charges. And also, um, when you come to the second month, sometimes um, your emotion and everything, you may not be able to place that long order because of your emotion. Okay, so however, if you go straight to the third month, then um, you don't have to worry about the expiry date. You don't have to keep on uh, initiating a new new uh, contract 
for each month. Do you understand? Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> so the next question is, with regards to open interest, uh, is it always highest in a spot month? Do we compare the value with previous days in order to make sense of the interest in the contract that you mentioned? Yeah. So for example, you are looking at the um, FKLI. So for FKLI, it's always the highest in the spot month. Okay. However, if you are looking at the F uh, CPO, it will be the third month, uh, second month. Okay. It's the second month or the third month. So it depends on the beginning of the month or end of the month. So for example, now, if you are looking at February, February is the first month, March 2nd, and then uh, April 3rd, uh, sorry, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. And then usually the second month is uh, April, and then the third month will be May. However, you see that the May contract is more, more open interest, having a higher open interest because of uh, we are going coming to the yeah, month end. As we are coming to the month end, then the the third month is a higher interest. So not necessarily it's a spot month. What I want to say is that not necessarily depends on what product that you are talking about. If it's FKLI, it is the spot month is the highest open interest. All right, excellent. Mm -hmm. So is it possible that if I fail to close my positions before the trading day and uh, nobody want to buy or sell oh uh, you mean trading day as in i actually don't really understand also <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. unless you have buy into that contract is uh no nobody interested that means that the contract could be far far month and uh calendar month is uh, a very far away then um you initiate a, a long position you initiated a long position like a uh, long time ago and then you want to s close it but however nobody um, there's not liquid enough la, in a sense it's not liquid enough so therefore it is possible because that's why you have to go for the uh, highest open interest or the most popular um, high uh, open interest uh, contract otherwise uh, you may run into that situation that means uh, you can't find uh, another buyer or seller to close your position mm, okay, okay. Yeah. So is a uh, FM seventy liquid to trade as the bid ask spread is often twenty point. Now, how do we define liquidity in futures? Um, I haven't traded. I haven't traded for the FM seventy, but I look at FM seventy the just the daily volume. Uh, the daily volume, uh, is uh, quite okay. I mean, um, as for a start, it is quite okay. So, um, I would think that uh, FM seventy, um, it is gaining popular. Yeah. Yeah. So it is quite liquid. Yes. Okay. So the next question is uh, to compare day to day open interest after the master. Uh, I think this is the follow up question from uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the audience. So to compare day to day open interest after the market close or before mm -hmm. the market open, is that correct? Um, usually the open interest of the, it's actually um, doesn't matter we will look at it as a big picture. I usually look at open interest as a big picture whereby um, I want to know which contract, if you are having a glance at all the contract months, right? So um, your attention will be focused on those contract months whereby the open interest is among the highest, comparatively among the highest. So it doesn't matter whether you, you look at um, the market close or market open, it doesn't matter. So as long as you can spot that the, the open interest is a, is a large amount of open interest, that means this month contract is still tradable. Okay, so you don't have to know um, either is, a, is it market closing or opening, it doesn't matter. Because it keeps changing. Once it opens, it will change all the way until it uh, closes. Yeah, the okay. open interest will keep changing. Yeah. Can you, uh, I think the next question is, can you read, I think the, the participants don't really understand about open interest. Can you reiterate open interest? Does it mean that, uh, mm -hmm. what do you mean by contract open? Uh, oh, okay. See, for example, uh, you, um, for example, you, uh, you long a contract, okay? You long a FKLI, you think that the market is going to go up, so you long one contract. So that means when you long one contract, you uh, your open interest in the market will increase by one okay because you have already long one contract however 
if let's say you want to close a position, the market did in fact go according to your plan and then you make some money and then you want to close the position. So once you close the position, then the open interest will reduce. And you are just looking at yourself. How about another person? A, B, C, D. So everybody, they will buy and sell, buy and close, buy and close, buy and close. So some of them, they will buy and then they wait for a longer time, then they close. So as long as people are buying and selling, right, this the, the open contract, the open interest will change accordingly. However, you want to see the big picture. The big picture is that you want to see a big uh, open interest whereby people are still interested in this particular month's contract. Mm. So uh, does that, did I understand? Yeah, Do I you, think you <laughs> explained I, I, it mm. fairly well. So uh, the next question, I let me try to understand what it means. Uh. All right, I will skip that question because I don't really understand. But uh, mm. is it necessary that open interest becomes zero when it comes to the maturity date? Uh, um, maturity date, oh, that one I haven't really uh, noticed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I haven't noticed that one when it comes to the maturity date. Mm. It could be, I mean, um, yeah, it could be a zero because uh, when the maturity, everybody have to close the position. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. Uh, the the next question is uh, is a little bit more sensitive. They're asking, "What is your average return a year trading futures?" Uh? Okay. Um, I started trading futures two zero one three, and um, along the years, some of the years where I when I get busy, then um, certain months I will not trade because when I'm too busy, so I notice. On, on average, right, if I can do well, I can perform like a 20%. Okay, a year. 20%. Uh, yeah, a year. So that is actually not, not good enough because um, uh, if you really focus, right, every month you can consistently make 5% uh, and then, in fact, you can make quite a lot of money if you really focus. However, because I couldn't focus, I'm too busy. So um, sometimes... Uh, I have the problem of neglecting my trades. When I neglect my trade, then I will have a lost position. So certain, certain um, years when I'm not so concentrated, then I do not perform well. But when I'm focusing, right, I can really perform. Yeah. So for future trading, you really need to give your um, time and energy and then focus on your trade rather than um, get yourself too busy. Yeah, yeah, forgetting your open position is very serious. It's, uh, very bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I did twice, the mistake twice. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Uh, hopefully next time you forget, right? Don't, wow, you make so much money. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, the next question yeah. is, like, how much forward can we trade for the FCPO? How much what? Forward. How much forward? I think maybe it's like... Oh, I see. 36 months. months. Oh, okay. Months. Calendar months, right? Yeah. Ah, 36 months. You can uh, trade up to 36 months. However, the advanced, the future... Uh, uh, advanced. Uh, um, you can trade up to 2020, the year 2020, for the futures contract. Wow. That is... Mm. Uh, 2020? Yeah. So, the, I think... I suppose that's for hedgers. Uh. I suppose that's for hedgers. That is incredible. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, right now I have answered, you have answered all the questions on my, <laughs> on my list. So if you have any more questions, you can put it up there and we will, uh, our speaker will address this shortly. Uh, mm. If you don't have any questions, so uh, let me just uh, go to the, let me promote the next uh, webinar. Uh, if I may take back the presenter control, Pauline. Mm, sure. I'll make myself presenter now. <laughs> Okay, wait. Uh, let me copy the link for you. Okay, so next for our next webinar, it will be based on Malay. Okay, so if you want to tune in uh, to understand features from a Malay uh, speaker, please join our next session. The 
the link is there. I just posted in the in the chat book, chat group. So the session is called Pengenalan kepada Konsep Niaga Hadapan. Okay, part one, bagian satu. Okay, 14 March, uh, 2019 is a Thursday. Okay, so registration link is in our uh, chat box. So or if if you have any Malay friends who want to learn what is a uh, future, so please uh, share the link with them so that they'll be able to tune in and understand uh, how they can use a futures contract to hatch their portfolio or to speculate and make uh, some income. So this is, uh, will be conducted by a Malay speaker in uh, Bahasa Melayu. So do you still have any other question? Well, I guess, uh, Pauline, you did a marvelous job. <laughs> Thank you. Right. So, I hope they learned something. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, um, all right. I want to thank uh, all of you. Oh, there are a lot of compliment message coming in. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Pauline. Thanks, Shane. Okay, now, oh, I have one more question. Yes, finally. Mm. Okay. Okay, this is in, also follow up from the question about open interest. Huh? Okay. okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people do not understand open interest. Okay. Okay. Say the open interest for FKLI on day one is 40,000. Mm. Day mm. two is 36,000. Day three mm. is 41,000. Day four mm. is thirty nine thousand. So every day is different a bit. Uh, forty thousand, thirty six thousand, forty one thousand, uh, thirty nine thousand. So, uh, yeah. uh, uh, doing. Do you think this will make sense, or you need a big difference to conclude that the open interest vary? Um. Actually, you look at the big picture. If let's say you are looking at uh thirty nine forty one, this is considered a very good uh liquidity for that particular um contract that you are referring it could be uh, the spot month fkli or the the uh third month of the um fcpo so if you are in this range of uh, 40 40, uh, 40 to fifty thousand con open interest of contract right this is considered a good uh trend so i would think that um doesn't matter if it's 39 41 a little bit different but as long as you are in this range right it is considered healthy so it, the, the trend is still strong. That means people are still interested in this particular contract. Yeah. Uh, I see. All right. Mm -hmm. Great. So unless you see like 40,000, the next day is like 3,000, then something is strong. Huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. So suddenly it reduced a lot, then yeah. it's uh, wrong. But uh, however, uh, if you are still within that range, so you're still okay. Okay. But from 40 down to 20, uh, that, that is something significant. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, excellent. So, uh, any more last questions before we close the, f uh, the floor for Q and A? Yeah, I seeing that. Uh, no questions. No questions. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. And okay. hope that this is a uh, has been a fruitful session for you. For those of you who uh, are new to futures trading i guess uh by getting some basic idea you can do more research and uh, uh and try out the futures uh simulation on the bursa marketplace.com if you have not opened an account yet uh, please go to www.bursamarketplace.com go to their uh sign up a virtual portfolio learn to do trading there and try to long or short a few contract because that follows the real market uh, real market movement of the FKLI uh, or whichever contract it is, uh, is spot month or future, uh, future month. All right, so you can practice first and uh, see whether you will be able to uh, uh, make a profit out of it. All right, so after you get the adequate education on futures, only that you open an account, uh, that's where you really uh, know exactly what it is because risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. If you know what you do, you have a proper education by following our webinar series, then uh, the next time when you trade, you'll be able to uh, ace okay, in the uh, uh, futures market. So for those of you who are asking where to join our April uh, 
webinar uh, the april webinar link uh, is not up yet so we are just posting the march link okay april webinar link please uh, follow us on our facebook page live chat facebook page or just follow bursa marketplace uh, dot com uh, in the event bursa event there will be a april webinar link okay so for those of you who are asking for the english session or chinese session for uh, april webinars please uh, stay tuned follow our Facebook page or you can also join me on my Facebook page Shane Chu that's where I share with you the futures webinar with that thank you everybody uh, thank you Pauline for tuning in uh, all the way from uh, Johor okay thank you so much and uh, may everybody have a pleasant rest of the day bye bye okay bye